In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the effects of point values on the scoring of assignments in PowerSchool, uh, the Power Teacher Gradebook. Uh, this applies also to the old gradebook, um, and it really speaks to uh, weighting of assignments. So we are using category weighting for our courses. We've got that 90%, 10% split assigned. Some schools might be using a different split, but within that, it's important to know how the point values of your assignments uh, relate to their weighting. So here's an example that I'm going to use. Uh, I've got a few assignments here. These are all formative assessments and they make up 10% of the grade. Now uh, over here I've got my two summative assessments. Those make up 90% of my grade and you can see how having very good scores in those summative assessments leads to a very good score overall for the, the trimester. Okay. Uh, and these, you know, if I shift these around a bit, uh, let's say I give the student a 1 instead of a 9, you'll see that affects the score a little bit. But because those, um, those formative assessments are only 10% of the grade, uh, they're not going to affect it that much. Now, on the other hand, when I look over at my, my summative assessments, uh, here I have a little tiny quizlet out of 10 points, and I have a unit test, which is out of 100 points. And if I give the student a very low grade on the unit test, you'll see how drastically that affects the grade. Okay, But I want to show you something else, which is that let's switch this one back. Let's put it back at 100. And I want to show you this Quizlet, which is out of 10 points. If I drop that score, it has a much smaller effect on the grade. And I want to show you why that is. So let's put that back at 10. And uh, what you're going to see here is this number is very important. So this is an assignment that's got 10 points on it. And this assignment has 100 points. We can see that when we go to edit the assignment. The score entry points is 100. For the other assignment, the score entry points is 10. Now, a lot of teachers will will think about how they want to use these points values based on how many questions there are on the assignment. So they'll say, oh, well, let's say I've got uh, another assignment. Let's create a new one. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start by copying my little Quizlet here. So let's call this Quizlet 2 and we'll, uh, we'll make it do, we'll make it do in a couple of days from now so that it, it's easy to track. And we're going to score this out of points. And, and let's say that we're going to score it out of 17 points because we have 17 questions on this test. When I save it, we can take a look at that in context with the others. Let's show our most recent scores. So if the student gets a pretty good grade on this, they're going to do pretty well. Let's give them, let's, let's reduce this and let's give them just a one, a really low score on this one. So that affects the grade. This student is still doing pretty well. But I want you to see this. Look at what happens if I give this score a one. That doesn't affect the grade quite as much. Okay, so we go from a 96 to an 89, that's seven points. Whereas this one, we go 85 to Oops, this should be 17. So we go 85 to 96. So this is 11 points. What's happening here is recognizing that this entry points is really about waiting. So it's really it's it's not the best practice to uh, think of this as a, just a convenient way to score assignments based on the number of questions they have. Um, the number of points you have in an assignment is going to affect the waiting. And we can see that either by 17 versus 10, or in the more extreme example of a 10 point quiz versus a 100 point test. Okay, this test is worth a lot more than either of these two assignments. And that's probably the way it should be. When you're grading assignments, you know, they're gonna have different weights and different values in your course. Um, so how can we control for this and how can we make this work in a really, in a realistic way when we've got question, you know, an assessment that might have 17 points? Well, here's what I would do. If this is a Quizlet and all my Quizlets are about the same value, 
I would probably make this worth 10 points. But what I would do here is I would score it by percent. And what this is going to allow me to do, I'm going to adjust some scores. What this is going to allow me to do, if I uh, pull up my calculator here, it's going to allow me to say, okay, a student scores a 16 out of 17, and they're going to get a 94%. Now I'm keeping this Quizlet and this Quizlet equivalent because of the number of points. See, it's still got 10 points, and it's still got 10 points. But I can use any number of, uh, of scores or any number of, of you know, actual questions in the assessment as I want. Okay. Um, this works the other way too. So let's say instead of a Quizlet, let's edit this one. And let's say that instead this is going to be a big project. It's going to take a long time. I'm going to give this 150 points. Now, usually when I do a project, I have a rubric, and my rubric may have something like 20 points on it, right? It's got four different items. Uh, you can score, or maybe five different items, and you can score a one to four on each of those items. But by using a percent, I can continue to score by percentage, and let's check out the score sheet. See, now that 100% is not looking, the 100% is working for me. Uh, but again, this is going to be a pretty important assignment, even compared to my test. If I drop that score way down, it's going to affect the grade quite a bit because it's worth one and a half times as much as that test. So it's important when you're creating assignments to understand how that weighting works. Another way you could do this this is kind of shifting gears, but another way you could do this is you could say, you know what, I really like having a scoring out of 10 points, or I really like scoring out of 100 points, but I do want to vary things. So I could say everything's going to be worth 100 points, and I'm going to use the weighting option. So maybe now I say 1.5, and I still score out of 100, and now this is going to be worth 150 points. I'm still getting to score out of 100. Uh, my Quizlet, I could do something similar. I can say that we're going to score it out of 100, but I'm going to give it a weight of 1 tenth, 0.1, so that it's actually worth 10 points. So by using either of these items, either the point value or the weighting, you can really adjust things around within your assignments. It's important to understand that, uh, that this is really about having the values that you set reflect your values in the course. Uh, it's not about anybody telling you how to grade or, or how you should grade. So we just want to make sure that mathematically everybody understands how this piece works. Okay, I hope that video was helpful to you uh, in creating your grades and making sure that they match with the things that you think are important in your course.